So the Stacy Fellowship um, is probably the greatest honor I've received during my career. It recognizes the work that myself and my entire lab and collaborators have been doing for um, now about 20 years. And by receiving this fellowship, uh, it comes with both money to support research, but also time to focus on research. That's the whole idea of, of the Stacy Fellowship. And so it's really a game changer for research and training in my laboratory at the University of Toronto Mississauga in the Department of Biology. If you go around the world, 55 to 56% of the world lives in urban areas. And because more people are living there, because this is the fastest growing ecosystem, it has a profound impact on organisms. But we actually don't really understand how it's influencing them. Um, and so that seems like a, a pretty fundamental problem, especially since most of these organisms have never experienced an ecosystem like this ever. So we are trying to understand in my lab how that urbanization influences the evolution of those populations. Can they adapt to a city or are they doomed to extinction once they're living in a city? So training the next generation of scientists is probably the most important thing that we do in my lab, whether it be undergraduates, master's students, PhD students, postdocs, or visiting professors and, and other scientists coming to a lab. And it's, as I just mentioned, among the most important, if not the most important, one of the most fun things as well. And so this recognition uh, really allows us to enhance that tremendously. It comes with additional funds. It comes with a different, uh, additional time for me to simply focus on research and training so that I can contribute to the training of, of these young scientists that are in my lab that will then go across Canada and the world and become the next generation of scientists. My name is Sophie Breitbart. I am a PhD student in Mark's lab, and I study how city life affects the ecology and evolution of plants. So I could say a lot of terrific things about my experiences in working with Mark, um, but here are two things that I really value about him as my advisor. So the first thing is that Mark is committed to training us so that we become independent scientists. And what I mean by this is that he guides us towards answering our own questions, but then he gives us the space to accomplish our own goals. And it's not an easy balance to strike, especially because we all have different knowledge bases that are always changing, um, but Mark's really good at sensing this. And secondly, Mark has this deep curiosity about the world around him and you can see it all over his face when he tags along to do field work or when a butterfly flies by. And the way that he thinks about science helps me realize how my project fits into multiple scales in science. So while I might study a very specific corner of urban evolution, for example, he helps me make connections to the fields of evolution and ecology more generally, plus the rest of science as a whole. And Mark is really good at reconciling all these perspectives and because of that, he helps me remember why what I'm doing is worthwhile and exciting. My name is James Santangelo. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in Mark's lab studying how urbanization influences plant evolution. I've known Mark for about eight or nine years now. Uh, and I've learned that not only is Mark a great scientist, but he's also just a great person. He does a really good job of cultivating a welcoming and productive lab environment where everybody's ideas are valued. Um, and he always has his students' best interests at heart. And so it's really hard to think of anybody more deserving of this DC award than he is. Uh, and so congratulations, Mark. And I look forward to many more years of, of discussions and collaborations. My name is Ruth, and I've spent the past five years completing a PhD under Mark's supervision. Mark is a lot of things to a lot of different people. For me, he has been a wonderful mentor. He is dedicated to his students, making sure that they have the best opportunities to learn and to excel. Mark is also an excellent teacher. It doesn't matter if it's in the classroom, his office, or outside in the forest, his passion for teaching and learning comes through with his love of science and nature. In fact, Mark's love for teaching is almost rivaled by his love for shrimp rings, which he has brought to just about every single lab potluck since I've been his student. I can't think of anyone else who is more deserving of winning this DC award than Mark. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mark. My name is Connor Fitzpatrick and I'm a former PhD student from Mark's lab. I was there from 2012 to 2018 
and I'm so happy that he's won this award. Mark's best qualities, I think, are his adventurous spirit when it comes to research and new questions. Uh, he's never afraid to dive into a topic that he knows nothing about. <laughs> he's also a fantastic mentor and goes above and beyond to help his students uh, succeed and advance their careers. And for that, I think he's very deserving of uh, this prize. So congratulations, Mark. All the best. I think it's amazing that Canada and specifically the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada makes awards like this one available to scientists. And they've been awarding this particular award since 1965. Uh, and it's been continuously awarded every single year since then to people like David Suzuki. And so I think the investments that Canada has made into basic science fundamental research is really making us a leader uh, in the world. And I think uh, this is just one of the most important things that Canada can do for um, our own standing in the world, but also our own uh, prosperity in terms of a nation uh, on an international stage.